When creating framed artwork to place on a wall, we don't always have the perfect image to apply as a texture. Maybe we see artwork while we're out and about and we take a picture of it. It may be at a slight angle, maybe slightly distorted, but we'd like to apply it to a frame so that we can see how it would look on a wall in scale. So in this case, I'd like to put a piece of artwork over the sofa here and our image is distorted a little bit as though we took a picture of it at an angle. So first I need to draw the frame to apply the artwork to. So I'll go ahead and get my rectangle tool and I'll draw right over the top of this wall. This wall is already part of a group and so it works well to just draw a rectangle right over the top of that. And if you got a measurement of your artwork, then that would work well. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle here. But again, you would measure the artwork and then draw a rectangle the same size as the artwork. So I've got a face here and it's Z fighting with the wall because it's on the exact same plane as the wall behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that forward, P for push pull, and I'll pull it forward an inch. Now I'm not getting that Z fighting anymore. Next, I'd like to give it a bit of a frame. So I'll go ahead and offset it. So the letter F for offset or this icon here. Click and release on the face and you can choose how thick you'd like the frame to be. I'm just gonna make it an inch and a half, 1.5, enter. And now I have a face to apply my artwork to. So it's gonna fit right in here and I'll go ahead and bring that into the drawing by going to File, Import, I'll find that artwork file. If you're not seeing your artwork file, you'll need to change your format to all supported image types. If it's on the SketchUp file format, it'll either be grayed out or you won't see it altogether. So format, all supported image types. It's at full contrast. I'll go ahead and click on artwork. And in this case, instead of using it as an image, I'd like to apply it as a texture. So I'll change the format to use as texture. Click import and it will be attached to our cursor. So that first click is gonna choose the beginning of our image. And it may seem like instinct to go ahead and go over here to the corner, but I like to have the first click inward a bit so that it doesn't accidentally apply it to my frame face. So click and release here, and we're just getting it into our drawing area and we'll adjust it later click and release. And so now I know that doesn't quite look right. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to adjust it. So because our image was taken at an angle, we need to go ahead and adjust it and fix it so that it fills our entire frame. So to adjust the texture, I'll right click, choose texture, position. And we're presented with a few different colored grips. I can click and drag on my drawing to bring it into view good enough. And these grips all kind of do something different. The blue distorts it this way. Yellow does something similar. These two will uh, help us pan around the drawing. And this one adjusts the scale and the angle of it. To take it a step further, though, this one doesn't quite look right. We still need to adjust the distortion. So I'll right click texture position. And if I right click on these and uncheck fixed pins, they'll all turn gray. Now I need to click and release to pick these up and set them down on the corner of my artwork. So I'm just clicking and releasing and clicking and releasing on each corner of my artwork. Now that I have them set into place, I can click and drag them to the corner of my frame to fix that distortion. I'll hit enter to set that into place. And now that looks a lot better and it gives me a better idea of what that previously distorted picture will look like. Be sure to triple click, one, two, three, so that we can collect all of that loose geometry and group it together so that we can easily move it along our wall and add more images.